Good day lords and ladies and welcome back to Age of Fear Free the Legend. Now, for those of you who are watching this, um, there's going to be a couple of new things. Also, I have talked to developers and they have been very gracious and have tweaked the ending of Age of Fear 2 just after I raised some concerns about some of the tone of how the campaign, like, ended, felt out of character about it, so they've tweaked it slightly, which I'm massively, massively grateful for, which is really cool. But let's get down to the dwarves. Legend of Grimrock. The dwarf Grimrock has to reach his brother's fortress. Many dangerous events await. Then he'd be thinking you're too tall for a dwarf's axe to cut you down. Right. We're going to play on experienced. I could play on master at this point. Experience is rather, like, normal, like, easy for me. But I don't want to constantly be replaying the same level over and over again, which is what happens on the master difficulty, I find. So, let us do this way, then, instead. Sit down, me wee lads. Let me tell you a story about the time me and your crazy uncle went on an adventure with the great Gilrock. What a character he was. Not the brightest of men, nor the friendliest. But his heart was in the right place. And he was absolutely hell-bent on beating the living daylights out of any evil thing he stumbled upon. So, anyway, there we were, with a few stouts down us and your uncle completely hammered. And we ended up in the sewer of all places. A disgusting spot where you'd walk knee-deep in shit, and every now and then some more shit had dropped from the ceiling. Yuck. I don't suppose you lads ever venture down into the underbelly of the city. I hope not. The city shit and get washed into the river no more. It gets collected in them old tunnels at the bottom of the mountain, where our forefathers first started carving the city into the very stone itself. Here we go. Quick notice, folks. This is the first time anyone has, um, as you're watching this video, this is the first time anyone has heard the um, the voiceovers for the dialogue in this game. So I'm just going to also quickly turn down like. The, the sound effect volume as well, it's a wee bit loud. Um, but yes, that's the first audio mm. for the game ever. Um, uh, not first uh, dialogue audio for this game. The dwarves are done, and um, soon the full patch will be released, which brings up both of them. It hasn't affected the dwarves just yet. Also, um, yeah, I can't help the glowing hand, that's the side effect of my record new recording software for this. Which is awesome because we shouldn't have any glitching, so it'll be perfectly smooth. Gimli, uh, hick, uh, my head. Dorian, ah, uh, suck your mouth. Gimli, the bastard, he, he, Aaron, what? Don't give us that, don't give us that rubbish. Dorin, this is your fault we're down here to begin with. Gimli, bleh, hick. Ooh, shut it. Shut it, roars Eren. Right. So, yes, we are here. Nicely, as you can see, we don't have any screen tear, which is fantastic. And I'm really pleased about this. It took me, it took me and the developers. Well, I say myself that the developers did all the hard work. The developers um, found a piece of software which was compatible with their stuff, which was fantastic. Um, we've seen it the wars before. They're predominantly a defensive unit. Um, in my experience, of fighting against them, you do not want to be massively aggressive. You can be, but most of their characters do not get multiple attacks, so you really have to play a sealed wall like a creeping sealed wall advance. Playgrats, yeah, there we've got playgrats. Um, so, here we go. We have um, no glitching for the first time, which is fantastic. We do have the little yellow circle around the uh, cursor, that's the side effect of the software, but that's about it. So we're going to form a sealed wall with a musket line behind it and start shooting at them. This is predominantly the tactic I find that you want to do with the dwarves. They get a lot of defensive buffs, as you can see, so you really don't want to charge at them unless you can help it. My advice is to basically do a counter advance, hold a bottleneck with your um, with your frontline dwarf infantry, 
and then shoot them with ranged units from behind. You can there are other units, there's some really nice dwarven units in here like the flamethrowers and um, some other nice bits and pieces that we've seen the dwarves have in the past. And like golems and stuff. I don't know if we'll get golems this time, but it'd be cool if we do. So let's pick off that ratman in the back so he can't flank us. And we'll beat him. Unfortunately, this dwarf, the dwarf at the bottom, Gimli, is completely and utterly drunk. So the downside of that is he moves he moves even slower. That giant rack. Ick. Blech. Behold the might of the dwarves. Run, you little ratty, before Gimli stamps on your hick. Um... Basically, the downside of Gimli being drunk is that his movement, pardon me, his movement is massively reduced, and he suffers attack and defense penalties. It's basically he ha all dwarves carry alcohol on them, which means that they can cure poison and disease, and a bunch of other stuff. But the problem with it is that it gives you a minus one to defense, minus one to attack, and I think minus. 30% movement? I, it's a pretty nasty debuff. I don't like using alcohol myself, but most dwarf units get it as free, so it's a cheaper version of a... It's a yeah, see there. Plus 2 HP self. It's basically an all-round... Yeah, it's one of those balancing things, which is that if you can afford to like take the stat debuff, you can use the alcohol rather than a straight-up healing potion, and it's cheaper. Right. But yeah, the walls move a lot slower than normal forces. We're suiting this slime up here. It's a bit hard to see. That's the only thing I would say. that They may want to increase the white question marks over objects slightly. Or at least change the colour of this rubble because it's really hard to see. It's also a worrying when I suit the rubble that it makes actually this... It makes a pain sound when you're suiting it. Which means I probably didn't want to touch it. Which is one of the reasons I sent them, um, the musketeer to, um, to shoot it. Though I must admit, I'm trying to figure out if he's actually a musketeer or if he's just a guy armed with a aquabus. Deeper and deeper we trolled. Eventually the tunnel split into three. All them tunnels smelled putrid. But that ain't the thing that made us stop and think where to go. There was a weird buzzing noise coming from one of the tunnels. It sounded a bit like them big mechanized things they use in the forge in the middles, but faster. Another path was oozing with goo, which covered up the entire wall, making the tunnel seem like it was glowing. And the last, there was the strong smell of rotten meat mixed in with the smell of the sewer. A grand selection of ways forward, wouldn't you say, kids? Now which one of them paths did you think we took? Gimli Hick. Nasty beast, how did the rats even get this big demanded door in? Stinking business, replied Eren. Ah, gods, this smell, what next? Right, so we can fight the zombies, fight the goo, or basically miss, fight, miss the fight completely. I'm not a fan of fighting slimes, to be honest. They regenerate, and it's always a pain. So let's fight the zombies instead. And also, I'm wondering why there are zombies in the sewers of a dwarf city. Now, I know this is going to sound weird, but we bumped into this bunch of zombies. We were really expecting to find a corpse or two. Well, corpses that were still dead, and not moving. But zombies were there waiting for us. They were hiding when we found them, I kid you not. They had their backs to us, and were staring intently around the corner like they were waiting to jump on someone. Now, if it weren't for Gimli's flailing about, they probably wouldn't have heard us. It was a sad irony or something when they turned around to fight us. This blank and empty look on their faces. I done like fighting zombies. Never did. Your uncle's a real bugger for getting us into that one. Right. Oh, the undead folks have spotted us. Well done, lads. Hee <laughs> hee, hick. Chuckles grimly. Right, we need to try and grab this choke point. But as you can see, Gimli is intoxicated, which means his movement is pants. 
So we're going to have to try and hold with what we can. Make sure our musketeer gets behind our defensive line. But we may not have a giant rack. Eek, eek, zombie. Ooh. Gimli, we're trying to itch into a fight. Get him, scratch his eyes. Five gold on the zombie hit. Who else is betting? Dorian just shakes his head. Rats. Right. To be honest, this looks, yeah. This actually isn't going to be the hardest fight as I thought. The rats, the AI in this battle is fairly competent. Or the AI, actually, that's a lie. The AI in these games tends to be actually very competent. So, what will happen? The AI is going to start mobbing the wounded unit straight away. Um, so, that these zombies will not last long at all. This isn't one of these games where a unit will get really weakened and the AI will go and fight someone else. It's literally the AI is going to start mobbing stuff. So we better start killing some of these rats before they come for us. Though unfortunately it doesn't mean we'll get less experience because the enemy units are killing them. Yeah, they kill that and they get the money as well. Actually, wait, we got the money for that. Oh, cool. I always thought that the unit that killed it got the funds. We're going to take a shot at the poisoned, that the plague racks. They really don't want to get disease. Dwarves are going to defense up. Well, actually, to be honest, I would, like, the, the sheer amount of... Um, the zombies just didn't do anything. The sheer amount of rats just ate them. But that makes sense. Looking from this, the rat with the low morale is going to break. Yeah, which is going to be a pain. This is the one thing I will say. Chasing down fleeing units with the wharves is not really an option unless you've won the battle already. It's pretty much an impossible situation. Um, you do not move fast enough to catch up with most units. So it's not recommended. It's just better to let the unit flee and just shoot it with a... An aquabus yeah, yeah. or a musket. I'm trying to figure out are these actually muskets or the aquabus? Aquabus are basically the fit uh, are the um are the gunpowder weapon that that um that basically um predate muskets. They're you basically have three types of range weapons, like uh, gunpowder weapons developments. You have what you basically call a hand cannon, which is a tube on a stick that you basically held like a tube on a stick um, and was you maybe had a tripod or something similar like these were like really these were like the precursors to, they were the first like generation of the gunpowder weapons and they were massively inaccurate and were basically like miniature cannons that you used to carry around on a long handled stick um, that you basically put under one arm and lit and like basically fired with a fuse you had the um, aquabus um, Aquabus, which was basically the um, sort of, it was sort of like the next step. If you if you think uh, they were very, very small. The stench down in the sewer was starting to get real bad, and I don't just mean the smell of shit. What a sewer is meant to smell like is mild compared to the stench we were getting on there. Giant rats and slimes wouldn't have been enough. There have to be a serious quantity of dead things to put out a stench like that. So, by this point, we knew that there was something seriously wrong going on down here. Where would so many dead people come from? It ain't like we have that much bloodshed in this here city, save for the fighting pits. But there, we meet our story's hero. Thorin, since when do we have undead in, the, in our sewers? Aaron, uh, hey, uh, brother? Gilrock, stand aside, foul beast. Gimli, don't you talk about my mother like that. Hick. Zombie, uh, fresh rains. Gilrock, the dead, becoming, arm yourselves. No, but, um, yeah, basically you have Aquabus, and then you have, um, which were like the, the early, um, muskets of their time, like they were the precursors to muskets, then you have muskets. And then after you have muskets, you then you go on to um, rifling and rifles. But, so is he a, like, does he carry a musket or is it an aquabus? 
but anyway, that's formalities. Let's get a let's get a sealed light, sealed wall set up. We'll get the. Uh, we'll call him a musketeer for this point. We'll get him the musketeer to stand behind the line. It'd be cool if he wasn't an arquebusier. Um, you don't see them very much in games. You saw them in like the Total War games, like in Medieval 2. But you don't see them in a lot of games. Everyone always like likes the look of muskets because aquabus were were very um, were very bulky. I mean, they they had a nice look to them, but they were bulky. It's your funeral. They're already dead, Grimly. Oh, right. Um, right. Gotta butcher them because all all our characters don't really, even like the dwarf heroes. From what I can see, like I've been told by people, the dwarf heroes don't really get a lot of attacks. They're much more like that. They're more like damage sponges, which they have a lot of health and a lot of defense, but they don't have many attacks. Right, we're gonna have to push because we can't allow them to basically. We can't allow those archers to take that bottleneck. So we're gonna try to try and push to get in range of their archers. Fortunately, we are dwarves, so we have hive armor value. Uh, disease is a pain. It will give us debuffs, which is always a, not a pleasant thing. We'll finish him off with the. No, that's a bad miss on my part. Right, we need to push on really and take this gap. Fortunately, they've blocked the other zombie in, which isn't too bad. I'm gonna shoot him. Right, I was hoping to try and get a double attack off, but we can't because because the drunk dwarf's at the bottom and he's got absolutely terrible movement. He's gonna be a massive liability. I'm not going to lie. He can't get past because of the placement of the Dwarf Warrior. Right, we killed him off. That one zombie's walking about, it's not a massive issue. We can still run him down. Shoot him up a bit. He can't do anything. We get the dwarf, the drunk dwarf up here, and he can punch him in the head. Excellent. We'll finish him off with the mus with the musketeer. No, but if you guys want to know what like uh, aqua, aqua, uh aquabus, aquabus, yeah, an aquabus. So the problem is you have aquabus and you have arbalist, which are arbalists are heavy crossbow users. Um, from the late medieval period, and Aquabus are the early type of, um, of basically m early type of musket. Um, I always get them confused. Um, but yeah, we'll have him finish him off. This looks like to be a very defensive campaign from what I've seen so far, and what I've what I experienced fighting against the dwarves. Is that every time I beat the dwarves, it was because the dwarves were overly aggressive in their movement. I could have literally just, just if they'd held a defensive position and not advanced and put up a defensive sealed wall, my units would have had a real problem. But the AI tends to be quite aggressive, so um, I find this game to be, I find this game it to be better to be a, a counter-attacking player rather than a massively offensive one unless you have the, the right setup for it because obviously it's not the best situation now naturally this Gilrock fellow was adamant about proving to us that such an evil really did exist in our stores it's not unheard of for the dead to rise on their own so we thought he was just being a crazy washed up lord hoping for one more moment of glory this Gilrock fellow he had himself some real nice armor. Pretty old, a bit worn and tattered, but it was finely made and would have looked almost majestic back in its day. 
must have cost him or his daddy a pretty little penny. I tell ye, lads, this Gilruck fellow is looking like a dwarf lord should look. Strong, healthy, and ready for a good battle. It's just a shame that he also looked a wee bit mad, and not the good kind. The dead came towards us, and he was out in front, pulling barrels out of the sludge and hurling them at the undead. He missed repeatedly. It was then we realized he wasn't trying to cream the buggers. Yeah, where were these dead coming from? Gilrock, well I had an army. An army? says Doran. Then why are you down in the sewers? To put an end to the evil deeds of this vile necromancer. Uh, hick, what necromancer stump was Gimli? Who? Who's there? stutters the necromancer. A righteous band of lads hell bent on purging your evil. Suit at the barrels. Oh, hey, boss. Right, explosive barrels. This would be interesting. Uh, maybe not that one. We'd only get one. We can't get any of them. We had to be careful with those because if we set the bottom ones off, we probably won't get the necromancer. We need to drag him in closer. So let's suit these barrels up here first. That'll probably do it. Yeah. Up the river. Kaboom! Aha! Gimli roars with laughter. That was awesome, Gil Gilrock. Aye, them gunpowder barrels pack a wee punts. Though I will actually say that back in the medieval period, gunpowder was like a massively run valuable commodity, and you didn't do that this kind of thing. You didn't waste massive amounts of gunpowder unless you really had to. Right, Necromant has put himself in a dumb place, so we're going to suit the barrels and take most of his forces to hell with him. Let's do this. Yeah, we'll start off with that one. It would cause a chain reaction and take a whole load of them with him. Right, we'll take them all out. The downside of this is... Ugh, screams the Necromancer. Hey... You drop something, oh, it's your head, chuckles Gilrock. Master, what happened, Master? Master, your brain fell out. Master, Master's brain, tasty. Nothing like a fresh cracked noggin, eh? That's disgusting, Just roars Grimlock. Here, zombie, don't forget the rest of him. I'm surprised the zombies are talking. That's actually a rather worrisome thing. Right, so how many... Right, we're not in range to suit any of the other barrels... There's no real barrels around, so we might have to try and relocate our position a bit. And try and just, mm, looking from it, we're going to probably have to try and box them in so we can still get them with the blast, which is not fantastic. Yeah, we let's just try and play a luck. We may just have to do a good old-fashioned um, hack fest with zombies, which isn't fantastic with the wolves because they don't have very many attacks, and there's a lot of them. And they've got an abomination, so we'll send that our dwarf hero as bait. Uh, this dwarf, I'm, I'm telling you, this drunk dwarf is going to be the thing that breaks my unit. We're not in range of those two barrels down the bottom. I need to get about there. It's not great because the enemy AI is probably going to charge us, but we should hopefully manage to do something about it. Yeah, the enemy AI charged. It's not great. Can't shoot. We can't, we were in we were in range of those, which was nice. He can't get up into range to attack because he's drunk off his face. So we're just gonna have to try and. Hold up, maybe you can bait them into attacking him, which will give us a bit more time. Okay, okay, okay. The Abomination has a bigger movement, has a bigger area, so he may be more susceptible to the explosion. Yeah, he might still just be in range. Is he still in range? That guy is. 
Yeah, we just go for that one. I think here we are. We can probably kill off the abomination just about. Yeah, there we go. Excellent. The abomination out of the way. We can just start pummeling on these zombies. It's going to be a time-consuming thing. You, the thing with the wolves is that you have to think of the wolves like a meat grinder, which is that they're they are basically like the meat grinder of Age of Fear factions, which is that they're very slow and tenacious, and they chew through enemies at a steady rate. They're not they're not like the demons where you have like loads of attacks coming out constantly. They're not like the humans who have like a massive initial impact with their knights. These guys take their time. They don't take any risks and they just plod. They just plod and they just mince the opponents. And it takes even longer when you start m missing 80% chances. The thing, of I, the thing I've learned with the wolves from both playing like Warhammer and playing these guys, like watching them, the AI control them, is that if you rush, if you try and be aggressive with your dwarves, you will lose units because they will get out of place, they will get outmaneuvered, they will get ganged. That's the, that's the easiest way to kill dwarves in this game, is to gang up on them with like multiple units where they can't get support from anyone. Ah, uh, dang it, I didn't, I didn't, I wanted to do the suit command, but unfortunately he went for a melee attack because he'd been stuck in melee. Right, he needs to hold his own against these rats, it shouldn't be too hard. Led on the way. Right, we'll get this done, yeah. You don't, the thing with the wolves is the wolves work best when they're in groups, so the moment you split the wolves off, they, they get a really bad situation on them, so you probably don't want to do it. We'll send the booze addict up there, we'll send the alcoholic up there to get the barrel. Well, I, I won't say an alcoholic, all dwarves drink. That's one of the characteristic definitions of dwarves and fantasy, is that they like their alcohol. Um, but I probably want to be careful with the one at the top, because he has a, such a serious handicap. I mean, I don't know if it's affecting his def his actual stats. If it does, it means he's an even weaker unit than I think he is. He may just have reduced movement. Alright, he can't get up there, so we're going to have to send the musketeer to do it. Uh, I always find it strange that some places you think you can get units to fit in, you can't. Right, it's shoot him with the sh with the right well with the musket the necromancer crumpled to the floor under a barrage of gunshots and blows to the face Gilrock stepped closer and took his head off in one clean swing just to be safe he kept muttering to himself after that, we felt we'd served out our punishment, and we were feeling pretty safe leaving the sewers with Gilrock. We killed a bunch of nasties, and even helped get rid of a necromancer. We were feeling awfully good about ourselves. It was a great relief when we got back up to the main level. The guards by the sewer gate took one look at Gilrock and let us out without question. I tell ye lads, fresh mountain air never tasted so good. The scent of fresh pine. Something I thought I'd never smell again, being in them sores. Yeah, punishment well served. And the reward well deserved, I think. Once we got out, Gilrock was suspiciously friendly, I can tell you that. We finally got a good look at his face. He was older than we first thought. Just past his prime. Certainly not old, but not young either. There was harnessed silver braided into his beard, and our first good look into his eyes told us exactly what we suspected. He'd seen things. Things nobody ought to be seeing. This fellow looked like a lord. The guards even seemed to know his name, and called him me lord, and Lord Gilruck. Nearly dying with your brothers is a humbling experience, lads. He kept thanking us, asking how we could return the favor for helping him. Eventually, it occurred to him to ask why we were in the sewers to begin with. So, we sheepishly told him what your uncle Gimli had done. 
fine work, lads. What such skilled lot as yourselves trawling the sewers? Oh, Gimli had a wee bar barney of a snooty murchy merchant upstairs like. He he he, hick. Chuckles Gimli. Did you deserve to be sent down there? replies Gillock. Not by, by, by reckoning, no. Then we'll make up for it, lads. Shall we pay us this merchant a visit? A, a wee visit. Night, still young. Alright, lads. If we visit the merchant or we go to the tavern and meet a friend, you decide. And some more story stuff opens up. Side missions. Excellent, excellent, excellent. And that's we're going to stop for the day, ladies and gentlemen. This has been Age of Fear 3, The Legend. I've been Cornish Knight. This has been Age of Fear 3. If you would like, please press the like button. If you would subscribe, please press the subscription button. You can follow me on Twitter. You can follow me on Steam. Or leave a comment in the comment sections. And I shall see you all next time on the next episode of Age of Fear 3. Good. Bye.